As has become clear in the past couple of live streams and devlogs that we've done on the channel, lore is going to be a relatively big part of the Echo experience. One of the main ways of doing this in my game will be dialogue, so today we're going to be talking about how we've created this system in my game. Let's go! Hey guys and welcome back to the seventh devlog for my roguelike indie game, Echo. Before we start, I just have to say a huge thank you to you guys. Since the upload of our last devlog, the subscriber count on the channel has almost doubled and we've received an astounding response to that particular devlog. I know I keep saying it, but I really can't stress enough how grateful I am for you guys giving the feedback and support on my channel, my game, and ultimately my dream. With this though, I can see only a small percentage of you viewers are actually subscribed to the channel, so if you do enjoy the content, please consider subscribing. It's free, and you can unsubscribe whenever you like if you should wish, and it'd really help me out. Big thanks to everyone who subscribed already again. Now, let's get down to business. So before we move on to the big ticket item of this video, let's talk about some of the smaller things that we've done. First off, I've started to put into place a system for managing audio in the game including music, player effects, character dialogue cues and UI sounds. There's still some gaps here and there as designing the sounds themselves is quite a time consuming task and quite frankly is a lower priority at the moment compared to finishing the gameplay backend code. But just so you can get an idea, here's how the game sounds now. I still need to go in and fix levels and add more sounds as I say, but the system is there now for this to happen which is a great start. Another thing I've spent some time on is working on player items, animation and HUD UI. I've added the code into the back end to allow the player to carry and collect weapons, movement items and health power ups, and spent some time with my girlfriend coming up with designs for the HUD display. I'd like some feedback in the comments, how would you guys approach this design? The player can only carry up to three items at once, but could theoretically have infinite health. Additionally, there could be up to four players in the game at any given time, so I need UI to show this on the screen, but not clutter the screen at the same time, which is quite a difficult task. But we're getting there slowly with iterations. Regarding animations, the main one has been the wall sliding and jumping animations, which now make the player feel a little more correct in the scene when climbing walls compared to how it did before. Yeah. Big ticket item, let's go! Dialogue systems. It is no secret that creating these systems can be a bit of a challenge, and there's a fair few different approaches across the internet for how you go about implementing one in Unity. So, for the sake of all of you game devs out there, here's how I did it. By the way, I'm going to get a tad technical in this bit, so if you're not interested in that side of things, feel free to skip to the timestamp on screen now to see the visual side of things. It's also in the description. So firstly, I've created two scriptable objects for representing a speaker, someone or something that can talk, and a dialogue, a series of sentences that could potentially branch off based on choices that the player makes. My choices are represented as custom data types, which if you've done anything in Unity before, you'll know that this isn't something that the editor handles very well when placed into an array. Basically not at all. So I created a custom editor script to allow me to easily add and remove options for dialogue choices, putting a cap at 3 as a maximum and allowing you to pick anything from 0 up to that number. This data type holds the text that the choice response would display, as well as the dialogue object that would be triggered when that option is selected. For the dialogue window code itself, I've extended the menu script and added some additional functionality for displaying text in a specific box based on these dialogue scriptable objects, and handling animations and sound for the dialogue as well. We set up a prototype for this in the live stream we did earlier this week, feel free to go and check the progress on that if you didn't see it when we were live. After ironing out some of the bugs, I added the integration with the rest of the game. The reason I chose to use the menu class as the basis for my dialog box controller was so that I could hook it into the way that the player controller handles UI interaction very easily, and just switch out the current menu parameter of the player to be the dialog box. I then added code to pause the world while the player is in dialog so that you can't get sneakily attacked while you're talking to someone or inspecting something. 
and the final step now was to make it look decent. I created some interaction icon graphics in Illustrator slash Photoshop and got some help again from my girlfriend to create the UI for the dialog box itself. After some animation and tweaking, I set up a placeholder speaker and set up my interaction zones and here's how it turned out. It's not perfect yet, but it's pretty close to decent and I'm quite happy with the result right now. So what's next you ask? Well, next step will be to get the actual game loop integrated again. My plan moving forward is to add in the enemies once more and introduce a system for moving from one level to the next. Following this will be a combination of reinstating the shops, regeneration of the world creation algorithms, and finally some bosses, at which point I'll be punting out the game demo for all you lovely people to test. But we'll officially announce that closer to the time, as there's some extra things I want to announce alongside that announcement. That's all for this one folks. I've got exams coming up in the following weeks at university, so likely one of either the devlogs or live streams will be on hiatus until March 8th when I've got those out of the way. Fear not though, I'll be posting updates on progress over on my Instagram, which you can find a link to in the description of this video. Big thanks again to everyone who's subscribed already, and anyone who isn't, please consider hitting that button and turning on the bell to get notified of future videos. Until the next one, cheers.